welcome to On the Chain. So hey, let's uh, let's segue over to uh, the SEC because the SEC is kind of interesting, All right? And so, <laughs> mate, it is interesting. Yeah, the SEC is interesting because they're just it's just nonstop, you know, losing for them. Just a bunch of losers. But here you have SEC loses bid to bar XRP holders from participating in regulators lawsuit against Ripple. It just seems like they keep getting smacked in the face, you know, so many times. Yeah, at what point, you know, how many times can you do you get smacked in the face before you finally say, "Hey, you know what? I've had enough." <laughs> Maybe it's me, it's not you. <laughs> I mean, at what point, at what point do they say that? And it's just it's all, you know, completely their fault. You know, they they keep stepping in it. You know, they keep uh, overreaching. Uh they they've singled out, you know, using their pillars of enforcement. Uh they launched this lawsuit and then they attack the XRP holders. Uh, they've say, said very derogatory things uh, to people that are in the XRP space. Uh, they came unprepared for their lawsuit against Ripple. <laughs> it just goes on and on and on. But here, U.S. District Judge uh, Annalisa Torres is showing XRP holders, uh, is allowing uh, XRP holders to remain a part of the U.S. Uh, Securities and Exchange Commission's ongoing legal battle with Ripple. And I think this is uh, an important part here. They'll allow them to retain their status, which is a really big part of what, uh, you know, John Deaton, obviously this whole thing, you know, revolves around uh, the lawsuit that John Deaton is uh, spearheading uh, or the involvement request in the in the lawsuit uh, that uh, Deaton has been spearheading. And so I think this is this is a really, really big move, Chip. What are, what are your thoughts? SEC, big winner or big loser? Oh, Jeff, to your point there, you know, it's funny when you when you think about private versus like government the government has access to a lot of a lot of uh resources when it comes to let's say an endless supply i want to say an endless supply but they're not worried like a little company would be worried about the legal fees we heard from garling house that when it's all said and done they're going to spend over 100 million dollars right yep what i think about yeah, is that ripple can hire has a has a universe of the best legal available the sec has the best legal available of who is working for government for hire, which is a very minute sort of thing. So you think about this, their counsel is going to be way better. There's just no doubt about it. And we've seen their counsel just crush the SEC. And that last phone call, Jeff, you and I have talked about it. I really started feeling bad for the counsel for the SEC because we hadn't heard from her before, um, this new um, attorney representing. And unfortunately, they set her up to fail because only because of how many times, like you said, they just like they keep losing and they keep doing stupid things. And so what do we end up hearing about? Well, we ended up hearing about the the whole this this whole collapse uh, on the call. Well, wait a minute. It was a security. Wait, all of XRP and the six secondary markets of security. The whole thing's gone pretty, pretty bad, Jeff. And you're right. I think you're right that keep losing is an understatement but they keep stepping in it big time. You want to throw that up there? Go ahead and throw that up there. What the heck is that, Jeff? <laughs> That's your buddy. Gary. 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 You know, you have to, the, uh, the, you have to, he's always with the hands and he's, she locked in a basement somewhere. <laughs> he probably is. But how do you like this? SEC chair refused to meet crypto leaders. XRP lawyer reveal. So could you imagine what is the one thing, Chip, that Gary is always telling people? Isn't he come telling in. come in? Talk <laughs> come to in. us. Come on come in. Come in and talk to us. We'll slap you with a Wells oh. notice, which means you'll be a future, <laughs> which means we'll be in, you know, you get you sued at some point, some future enforcement. Come on so in. John, talk to us. So John Deaton, you know, founder of Crypto Law, lawyer for the XRP holders, claimed that Gary Genza refused to meet the 69,000 XRP holders. However, he also revealed that uh, SEC chair didn't even meet with Congress. Instead of meeting with key players, Genzer meets around seven times with a firm that controls 90% of his money. So where do you think his allegiance is? To the people uh, that he was uh, appointed to help or himself? And it just seems like it's a very uh, uh, common uh, theme that we're seeing lately that these individuals within uh, the political echelons uh, seem to be milking the system for hundreds of millions of dollars. And he's no different, even though he made 
you know, a significant amount of amount of money in the private sector. Um, however, since he's been in government, uh, he's just using the people and using position of power. And now he's uh, increasing his wealth. Here's his uh, wealth is being around $100 million. There you go. Hmm. And that's it. They don't. And it's amazing because it's not just that the commission doesn't care about improprieties, appearance of impropriety. It seems like there's a lot of government. They just don't seem to care. Now it's just it's in our face. They're just flaunting it. What are your thoughts? Jeff, I, I just keep going back to what you just keep saying. They just keep on losing. But listen, I mean, in all fairness, if you are you want to be careful where you move your power. So if you're someone like Gary Gensler, and I'm thinking like the SEC and the pillars of enforcement, you don't want to, it's not going to help your case or your mission of enforcement if you go out and meet with uh, with XRP holders, right? Of course, you want to worry about your personal wealth. You want to see all that. but And it, and it looks like, well, that does. it's not a good look. But the bottom line is, is that why would... Why would he meet with with XRP holders? Why would he meet with someone like I mean? But it comes down to the whole thing is like when you do meet, you get slapped with a Wells notice anyway. So what if you're a private, you know, retail holder of XRP? You get into this whole sort of concept over and over again. And I honestly don't think any good thing. I don't think anything good comes from it. I wanted to throw this up here, Jeff. Look at this question at here all. that you marked. Ooh. So Ripple Preacher. Do we know yet who the third oh. party was referred to in the latest release in the court case? Good question. Well, I I would say this, you know, so in that letter, it talks a lot about contracts and, you know, former, and it talks about, you know, counterparties. And you know what? I mean, so originally I was thinking it, it can't be Simpson Thatcher because law firms do not have counterparties. And, you know, maybe it's just someone who, was talking with um with Ripple. Maybe it was somebody who doesn't want their name out there for obvious reasons because if suppose the SEC knew that this company was talking to Ripple and let's suppose it's a company based in the US, they don't they probably don't want the heat coming down on them. It could be something like that. It could be there's I mean we can only speculate at this point, Jeff, because we don't know. I mean what are your what are your thoughts? What do you think who do you think that third party is and why do you think they want to seal that so badly? I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see. I know we've got some uh, some details on it. So I think that the uh, suspense is going to be the best part. Are you down with OTC? Please like, subscribe and click the bell to be notified when the next video drops.